In the last two videos, the subjects of linear perspective, vanishing points, distance points and foreshortening were discussed. The examples shown had one single vanishing point, which is the simplest form of linear perspective. But an artist can also include more than one vanishing point to properly draw perspective. In fact, an artist can include as many vanishing points as he or she wants, as we can see in this work by William Hogarth from 1753. However, choosing that many different vanishing points may also mean that the perspective is no longer correct in a mathematical sense. Hogarth's work is actually a satirical piece in which he violated the laws of linear perspective in many different ways. It becomes clearly visible when we start by drawing the perspective lines following the tiled floor in the right foreground. When linear perspective is applied correctly, all these lines should neatly converge in a single vanishing point. But here, the lines just don't end up together. We can draw even some more lines following the perspective of other buildings in this drawing. The chaos only becomes bigger and none of the perspective in this painting makes sense. Now Hogarth did this on purpose and there are many other, more unrealistic aspects in this painting which may warrant a separate video. Before explaining correct two-point linear perspective, I want to show one more example. This is flower beds in Holland, painted in 1883 by one of the most famous artists in history, Vincent van Gogh. When looking at this work, it all seems pretty nice. Assuming that the flower beds are neat rectangles in reality, it looks like van Gogh applied one-point linear perspective correctly. The beds get progressively smaller as they are located farther away from the viewer. To find the vanishing point, let's draw a line in between the red and yellow flower bed in the foreground. And then add a line following the path between the white and red flower bed. The vanishing point should be around the point where these two lines intersect. And indeed, the third path also leads to this vanishing point. But then, tracing the next path between the flower beds, the line seems to be somewhat off. Now that may be because I have not traced it completely accurately, but the next path ends up way off our initial vanishing point. And while I trace a few more paths, and also a line from the farmhouse in the center, you can see that several of them are ending up near a single point, but others are off. In defense of Van Gogh, he painted this really early in his career and he probably worked relatively quickly on it without starting from a vanishing point. It's still a beautiful painting, but it does hopefully illustrate that getting linear perspective right is not always that easy and just using our intuition is not always going to do that. It actually does require some careful preparation and that is certainly true for when we consider two-point linear perspective. To understand two-point linear perspective, it will be helpful to look at this painting from 1651 by Gerard Houkgeest. It is entitled Ambulatory of the Nieuwe Kerk in Delft with the tomb of William the Silent. Let's look at the tiles on the floor first. You may see that the tiles seem to go in two different directions. One pattern shows how the tiles are going into the nave of the church on the left. Another pattern shows the tiles going into the side wall on the right. If we follow the directions of the tiles and we carefully draw the lines to find the vanishing point, we see that there is one vanishing point just outside of the painting on the left side but we can also trace the directions of the tiles going toward the wall on the right. And then we find a second vanishing point. This is a textbook example of two-point linear perspective. And remember that in one-point linear perspective, the horizontal line going through the vanishing point 
is the horizon line. Here the horizon line goes through both vanishing points. As we will see later, this is not an absolute requirement for linear perspective, but it is a neat way of doing it. And as Haukgeest was one of the first artists to implement two-point linear perspective according to the laws of mathematics, he used the most convenient setup. Now to demonstrate how accurately Haukgeest implemented this two-point linear perspective, we can also trace the directions of the window frames and walls on the right side. These are the walls and windows of the nave of the church and should thus end up in the same vanishing point as those tiles going down the nave. And the same is true for the altar in the center. And indeed, they all end up in exactly the same point. The same can be done for any elements in the church that stand at a 90 degree angle from the wall of the nave, like those flagpoles sticking out of the wall. Tracing these lines shows that they all align with our second vanishing point. It is helpful to know that two-point perspective is only useful when objects are set at an oblique angle from our viewpoint. In simpler terms, that means that we do not look straight at a space and all walls are at a 90 degree angle, like we see for example in Da Vinci's The Last Supper. In Haukgeist painting, it is clear that we do not look straight down the nave of the church, but we look as if we stand in the center of the church with our head somewhat turned to the right, such that we can see both part of the right wall and part of the nave on our left. This idea may become clearer when we look at Gustave Caillebotte's rainy day in Paris. We are situated on a Parisian street, looking straight at the building just left of the center, on the other side of the square. We can confirm that we are looking straight at it by drawing some perfectly horizontal lines tracing the facade of that building. But the building does not have a nice square or rectangular shape, instead it has a more triangular shape. In other words, the streets on the left and right of the building are not parallel to each other. We can now trace the directions of the different floors on each side of the building to find the vanishing points. Let's start with the facade on the left and line by line we can see how they all converge at the same point, which is one of the vanishing points. Now we can do the same for the facade on the right and these lines converge at another vanishing point. We can even add a line along the building on the other side of the street to confirm that this is a straight street, as that line also ends up in the same point. And just like we saw in Haukgeist painting earlier, both vanishing points lie on the same horizon line. The question then, is whether both vanishing points always have to be on the horizon line. Here is a painting from around 1727 by Canaletto, entitled Venice, the Rialto Bridge from the North. Just as in Caillebotte's painting, there is a building at the center that we look at from an oblique angle. That is, we are not standing straight in front of any of its facades. This means that there are two vanishing points. Tracing the floors on the left we can find the first vanishing point. And then, doing the same with the walls on the right we can find the other vanishing point, which is outside the picture plane. Now if we add a straight line going through the vanishing point on the left, we expect it to also go through the vanishing point on the right. Because both vanishing points should be on the horizon line. Right? In this case you can see that the green horizon line is not intersecting with the vanishing point on the right. This means that Canaletto seems to be off mathematically. Because if we look straight at the scene that he was painting, both vanishing points should be on the horizon line. It is like when we take a photograph with our phone. If we hold the phone straight, 
both vanishing points should be on the horizon line. But if we tilt our phone a bit when taking the picture, the horizon line is not straight anymore. So it seems that Canaletto was a little bit off here. I don't blame him, as there are many other buildings in this painting, all captured from somewhat different angles, in a city that was not built using the modern building techniques of today. But it does show once again, just as with Van Gogh, that it is not that easy to get a linear perspective perfectly right. So this is two-point linear perspective. But when painting a scene, you observe outdoors, things get even more complicated. Because the various buildings are not all neatly lined up and parallel to each other. That means that we may see different buildings from different angles. And unless we look straight at the building, or when buildings are set at a 90 degrees angle from each other, it means that each building leads to a different vanishing point. Here is a quick illustration of how the building on the left in Kaibot's painting leads to a different vanishing point not on the horizon line. And the building on the right leads to another vanishing point. But as we are looking at different angles at these buildings, it does not mean that Kaibot got his perspective wrong. But that is something that we may explore in a later video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts about linear perspective, or if you can think of other interesting paintings that either got the linear perspective perfectly right, or maybe seem to have some mistakes. And finally, if you want to support the channel, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be alerted when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.